This video, this vlog, is going to be for the first 2014 prop, uh, which is the first section of foam wall panels I'm going to be making. I've got 41 two-foot wide panels and two one-foot panels I need to make up. Thought I'd kind of run you over what I was going to be doing for this first set. Now, if you've seen my setup videos or my walkthroughs, you'll recognize this wallpaper it's that uh scene setter you know plastic wallpaper you get it's like 20 bucks for a 40 foot roll usually unless you get the specialty stuff and then it's a little bit more or you get a little less but that's the top piece that's the bottom piece and it's getting harder and harder to find this style of wallpaper and it's one that's really popular in my haunt so what i decided to do was try to replicate it to some extent so I went through took a bunch of this cut out the pieces that I liked off the wallpaper and then went and took them and ran them through my scanner and scanned off scanned out all the different pieces and the parts and what have you uh, all on paper you know and then I cut them out and this one's stuck together, and it's not supposed to be stuck together. Come on, get off there. There we go. Like this one here is actually this piece here. It goes up there. Now, I could, uh, what I'm attempting to do is make some templates. Uh, I could try to, I could take this pattern using a pencil and just hand sketch everything onto the foam. It would take forever to do that. You know, using a ruler and a pencil and, you know, looking at the picture and sketch it. 41 panels, it'd take me a couple of months to get them all traced out that way. The easier way of doing it was doing what I did, is taking the elements off the wallpaper I like, making a paper stencil out of them. And then what I can simply do is figure out where I want it on the foam, put it up there, trace around it, got it. And then I can do whatever detail work I want to do on it you know by hand it makes it a little bit quicker that way and what have you problem is with so many panels i'm going to need a ton of these paper stencils because these stencils are going to wear out real quick one way of getting around that it's a little bit more work but it's a time saver is i've got some eighth inch veneer aka luon you know it's uh eighth inch thick some scrap i've got and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take these, I'm going to use some spray glue, and I'm going to glue these onto the Luon. And then take the pieces over to my jigsaw and cut them out on the jigsaw. The Luon will act as a backer, and I can use it to trace, and the stencils will last through the whole build. Takes a little bit more time doing it this way, because you got the time involved in cutting them out and what have you. But all in all, it ends up being quicker than having to go over to the foam, you know, and, you know, well, you get the idea. So, my next step now is I've got tons of different pieces, what have you, that I went through, different elements off the wall. There's a wallpaper pattern, you know, what have you, some of the damaged areas, what have you. And I don't even know if I'm going to use all of those. You know, I won't know until I actually go in and lay it out on the uh, foam what I'm going to end up using. But, uh, so right now I gotta get the paper mounted onto the wood and then I gotta get the wood cut out. That's what I'm working on now. So, uh, probably taking me the better part of the day. Okay, boys and girls, end of the day on the 18th, I believe it is. Uh, been out here all day long. 
getting these cut out. These are all my different uh, patterns, what have you, that are going to be put together on that foam to get the panels I want. Uh, this one here is going to be for the uh, wallpaper on the top. Uh, I've got these two here are the top and the bottom of the framework for the wings coating. Uh, I've got decorations for the co decorations here, here, and here for the pillars. Uh, another ornamental piece for the pillars. And I went and took that skull and broke it down a little bit further because that's something else that's going to be detailed. And then some detail work for up at the top of the walls. So I got all my miscellaneous pieces together. Spent the last five days, four or five days, going over 20 out of the 41 panels. Actually, 21 out of the 41 panels I made or cut. Getting the first pattern on it to get ready to start carving. And I figured I'd run you through kind of what I did. Now, I showed you all the various templates and what have you that I cut out that I was planning on using. Uh, in the course of laying the first panel out, which took about eight hours, believe it or not, because uh, I kept changing things, reworking things, you know, redoing things, taking some things away, adding other things. Ended up coming up with some panels that were similar to that wallpaper I showed you earlier in the vlog, uh, but yet was totally different. And I thought I would show you what we ended up coming up with. And it was this here. That was the first panel. And get out of the way so I'm not in the light. And as you can see, it's a royal <laughs> mess. <laughs> All the way down. Uh, I've got the skull on here, which is like on the original board. And it had a flowery kind of print that went all the way down to about here. So I, I didn't like the flowery print on it. So I ended up taking that off and you know what have you. Uh, the cove uh, was supposed to have a, or not cove, but chair railing was supposed to have a pattern on it. I didn't like that so I took it off and so on. Uh, I had a decorative trim piece that was supposed to go here in this area. I got rid of that. There was also a uh, decorative flowery print on the corner of the molding, and I didn't like that. I thought I'd go bone, more like of a skeleton pattern, but that first panel took about eight hours. Uh, after I figured out the uh, pattern I wanted to use, I went over, and here was my next panel, and as you can see, it's a little bit cleaner. And I went through and fine-tuned them a little bit more as I went further along into them. But uh, though that is ba the basic pattern that the first 21 panels are going to have. Uh, the other 20 panels are going to be part of the uh, this set. Going to be pretty much the same layup, you know, with the wings coating down below the cove and the wallpaper design. It's going to be totally identical that way, except it won't have the pillar on it. And what we'll be doing is I'll have one panel with a pillar, one panel without, and I'll just kind of alternate. Uh, my measurements and stuff all work out, and they should. My cove, or my uh, trim on my uh, Wayne's coating will line up. Okay, there we go, that's a little bit better. But you can hopefully kind of see how things kind of line up with those two panels together. But uh, anyway, that's kind of the look I'm going for. Uh, next stage from here, now that I've got these all laid out, is to sit down and actually start doing the carving and sanding on them. So uh, I'll give you some clips of that. Uh, but that, I wanted to kind of show you the thought process. Like I said, the original panel with taking things off and adding things to it and what have you, took me about eight hours to get my pattern figured out. Uh, after that, it took me two hours for the next panel, and as I went along on it, uh, I was able to, you know, shorten it up. You know, as I got more depth at uh, drawing the pattern on there, it ended up taking, you know, time I got down about an hour and 40 minutes just to sketch out one panel. A lot of work, got a couple of blisters out of it, 
but it ended up working. So uh, I'm going to start doing some carbon and we'll give you some shots of that and uh, some of the finished product too as we go along. Hey beautiful people, <laughs> it's late, uh, not that late, it's about 7 o'clock my time. Just getting done with dinner. Uh, prior to dinner I got my carving done on the first panel. I uh, figured I'd kind of give you uh, a lay down version of a look. Uh, I, first panel usually when I, when I do the very first panel I'm playing around a lot with the depth I set the bit on the Dremel you know to do the inlays and stuff and there's a couple areas on here I'm going to be messing with uh, that will be different on other panels uh, the first one is this this area right in here I did kind of like a uh, stair step you know where I just backed the bit off a little bit you know so it would be more of a raised area and ended up not liking it just not a big enough stair step so I'm going to have to kind of mess with that I think and I'll adjust that on uh, future panels uh, the other one was on the pillar here. Now, when I paint this, the wallpaper effect down the sides are going to be two different shades of red. The uh, face of it is going to be a lighter red to where the uh, routed out parts I did in here are going to be a darker red. So those turned out just fine. Uh, in here, on the top part of the pillar, which are supposed to be the bones, the bone field, the bones are going to be in white or a grayish white and I see about doing a dark almost a blackish purple color for the top part of the pillar while the cap and the base the fluting is going to be a grayish white color uh, you know so that will differentiate you know the wallpaper on either side from the pillar I'm debating on the other hand on maybe adjusting my drum a little bit more so my uh, depth on the on the uh, detail work on the uh, on the uh, pattern on the wallpaper is different from the uh, what I routed out on the pillar. Uh, I might make this a little bit deeper than what this is because right now they're pretty much at the same level. Though you know, like I said, paint would uh, you know show it off a little bit more. Uh, so I'm debating on that. So, so far I've got that. I'm going to adjust on the next, on the next panel. I'm going to play with this a little bit on the next panel. The other portion was on the uh, chair railing or cove molding I put in here. Uh, if you notice in this area here, the uh, cracks I put in are way more noticeable than the cracks on here. I think I cut this one just a hair too deep. So I'm definitely going to be shortening that one up so I'm not removing as much material. Uh, as far as down here, uh, I think this base down here is okay. I think I kind of like it that depth. I'm not sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to, anyway, I'm going to have to think about it. So I've got this area, I've got this area, this area, and that area. I need to play with as far as depth. The rest of it turned out really, really good. Now, on the other panels I've done, uh, both the brick and the wallpaper pattern in the uh, picture gallery, which I did the year before last, when I got to this stage, I give it a light sanding, you know, like in here, you can see, you know, there's marks on my drum and stuff, you know, I'd sand that down, and then i call it quits. Here with this one, though, uh, there's going to be a lot of sanding involved. Not only do I have to sand these, this area down in the wange coating to get rid of all the groove marks, I'm going to go around on the bones and kind of round them off a little bit. So the whole frame here will get rounded off. I'm going to round off this area a little bit. This area will get rounded off. Uh, the molding here on either side of the uh, chair rail is going to get rounded. And I'll probably come in and do a little bit of work on the bones in here and kind of give them a rounded look as well. That's what I'm going to work on next. Now, time frame for the carving. This being my first panel, it took longer than and longer than it normally would. You know, uh, always is the very first one always takes longer. And time you get two or three of them done, you know, your time uh, speed picks up. Uh, this one here with this pattern took about four hours to carve, roughly. Now, in between three to four hours to carve. Uh, I'm expecting by the time I get this 
project finished, you know, I'll have that cut pretty much in half. You know, I'm still kind of feeling it out, testing depths and everything else. Uh, okay, the sanding I had planned to do on the board didn't take as long as I thought. So I figured I'd show you the finished product or semi-finished product. You know, I got to do those changes I mentioned on the carving and stuff. But here we go. One new wall panel and I did do a change here uh, on the bone. I had planned to go around and round these bones off too and with as small as they are if I start sanding them there's a good possibility they're going to chip and break up and I'm going to lose bones. Uh, you know the uh, foam crumbles real easy. It doesn't take much to break it so I figure I'm going to leave those just the way they are as well as a skull. I'm going to leave the skull just the way it is. You know, sanding this upper edge up here is okay. I'd have no problem. There's a lot of meat there, but when you start getting down around the eye sockets and stuff, I think it's just best to, just to leave that as is and give it the same treatment I do the bones. You know, painting them a bone white or a white color and, you know, painting the eyes and the mouth in black. And I think I'm just going to leave those just the way they are. Uh, this detail here, I kind of rounded off the corners and I rounded off, you get a better, better camera angle, I rounded off over the cove mode molding or chair molding. And like I said, this inlay here, I'm not going to cut it as deep on my next panel. I'm going to leave it a little bit more raised. And then the uh, box here on the, uh, down on the uh, Wayne's coating is also rounded off all the way down and then I did the detail here as well I rounded it off and then with this here I think I'm not going to cut my grooves as deep there as well I'm going to do those a little less as well uh, but all in all I don't know I might might leave them like that I do kind of in a way I kind of like that look with the uh, line cut in there uh, to get the uh, rounded off groove section I could sand it down more and get those a little bit wider if I want and some of the later panels I might end up doing it but what I ended up doing here and I know weird angle is I took a piece of dowel and it's about oh half inch round dowel half inch width dowel and I just wrapped my sandpaper around it and then I cut that groove in there to give a I give a resting place for the dowel and I just set the dowel in the groove and then just sit that sat there and slid it down the track to widen it out and it seemed to work pretty good so but anyway there's the first panel and like I did when I was sketching it out you know I'm gonna be making some adjustments so but it worked pretty good I think but now you've got kind of an idea of what I'm working on. Now I wanted to refer you guys back to my original panel. I just got done doing the second panel, making adjustments and what have you. And several things I did on my adjustments. One, the base way down there. I did something different with that. I raised this a little bit differently. And I did the grooves a little bit differently on here. Uh, let's see what else did I change? Oh, the depth on the bone pillars here. There we go. Zoom that out. I did a little bit differently, and I also did the top a little bit differently on the second sheet. And then, and what I've done with the second sheet is how I'm going to do the rest of the sheets, starting with the bottom of it. I went ahead and left this raised instead of over there on that one. We'll zoom it in and you see I dug it in. I chose to leave it raised up. Uh, I did go through on, like I did on that one, I rounded off this piece. It kind of offsets this a little bit. Uh, let's see, as to the grooves on here, you'll notice some of my, my uh, Dremel mark I made here. I did not want to cut in too deeply so I left that mark in there. It's not going to bother me all that much. Uh, it's like that down here at the base and up there at the top of it too. So, but you know, it's a little bit different. On the original panel I did, I had the Dremel 
set a little deeper so you can see the groove of the Dremel down the pillars. Now I could, if I want to, and I just might do it, take some clear caulking and just fill that Dremel mark in so you don't see it. In fact, I think I am going to do that. Uh, you know, once it's, uh, you get the clear caulking in there, get painted, you don't even see the mark. So I might do that. Uh, this here, uh, I back the Dremel out so it's not so deep, so the cracks end up showing up a little bit better. And I left the Dremel bit at that depth, which is deeper than what I did the wallpaper marks at, and went and did the bone field. So it's a little bit deeper, and it stands out a little bit more. Now, the other thing I did on the top is I used three different depths uh, on the uh, Dremel. Here, get me my practice sheet out here, and you can kind of see it. You know, there's a real shallow one there in the middle. That's the one I used uh, for the wallpaper. And then the next one over the medium depth is what I use for the pillar and the cove mold and to do the fluting. And then uh, that one there is what I use for doing the cracks and the damage. And what I did up here is the original picture had uh, five different tiers. There was two different stair steps there and one, 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 you know, so five steps. And I decided I'd break it down into three steps. My smallest one down here by the uh, base is the same depth as the damage areas. This area here is actually the same depth as this part of the pillar and on the cove and on the fluting. And then this uh, last piece, raised piece, is the same depth as the uh, wallpaper. And what I'll end up doing is after I get th that paint, I'll just draw bl uh, some black lines in to emphasize it. Uh, probably should have just left that the same as what I did down here at the base. And I don't know, maybe further down the line I might do that. I don't know. But uh, for all intents and purposes, this is what the panels are going to look like from here on out. And I thought I'd give you a little bit of a look at it. Uh, with the only changes I'm going to make is I'm going to put some clear caulking in these spots here to hide the Dremel lines and smooth that out, you know, on both ends. And I might just say the hell with it and leave this as is, too, you know, like it is on the bottom, so it kind of matches a bit more. So I think that's going to be one other change. Other than that, this panel and that panel will have the areas routed out on them, but once you get them painted, they should blend in. But anyway, that's you know the basic shape of the patterns. It takes about three hours or so to get the panel to this stage. Uh, it takes about an hour and 45 minutes to get them all carved with the Dremel. Almost two hours exactly to get them carved with the Dremel. Then roughly about an hour to go through and do the sanding on them. These panels are going to be the most labor-intensive panels I've done yet. It's going to take me ages to get them all carved before I'm even ready for paint. Okay, people, I wanted to run you through uh, the process of actually doing the carving. Uh, I did one of these type of videos last year when I was working on the uh, panels for my cesspool room, that brick pattern. And the year before that, when I did the photo gallery hall, which had Wayne's coating and a wallpaper with damage on it. I'm doing a, another one for two reasons. First off, a lot of new subscribers to the channel <laughs> uh, that haven't seen those videos or haven't had the time to go back and look at those videos. Second, each wall pan, each different style of wall panel I do, uh, though it's basically the same material, you know, same practice, you know, I'm doing them are a little bit different because I get a little bit more ornate with you know what I'm doing on my I, I uh, evolve you know with my patterns and stuff uh, no different this year this year uh, the panels I'm doing are probably some of the most complicated I've ever done and there's a lot more to them a lot more steps so you know process learns 
Uh, now, before we actually start getting into carving, I wanted to cover the tools that we will be using and uh, a couple of tips that we'll have, I'll have for you, to, uh, you know, that you can use for the project. First off, you need a nice big space to work in. Right now, I've got my workbench, as you have seen, you know, on the other side of me over there, and a six foot long table. The table is a little over two foot, it's almost three foot wide. My panels are two foot wide by about seven foot long, so this gives me enough room to slide the panel back and forth and what have you as I need. That's a must, you're going to need room for manuring. Uh, as to actual tools, you'll be, for me, you know, there's several different ways you can do the carving. I prefer using a Dremel, a Dremel with a routering attachment. Now the uh, routering attachment I'm using on here, I bought some years ago down at Sears. Uh, it's a router platform for uh, the Craftsman version of the Dremel. And it happens to fit the regular Dremel. And it works great. You can adjust the depth of your bit and what have you. Uh, also, uh, you get a clearer view uh, of the bit and what you're working on versus uh, a lot of people use that grout attachment for the Dremel when they do their carving. I've never liked it because you don't, you can't really see what you're working on. Uh, as far as bits for, uh, to use in your Dremel, uh, I use, uh, it's a tungsten, uh, tungsten carbide cutter. It's a uh, number 9901 uh, Dremel bit. Uh, it's about an eighth of an inch thick and you cut up to about half inch depth with uh, with this cutter uh, before you know so it works good because I'm using one inch thick uh, foam insulation uh, with that you know that's that's my main my main tool I use uh, some of the other things that you're going to also need for the project uh, is sandpaper and I've got a bunch of pre-cut sandpaper uh, assorted blocks uh, right now I've got a small rectangular block and a wood dowel I'm using. I'm also using a piece of sandpaper folded over. You, know, you need that for, uh, you know, depending on your project and what have you, the pattern you're cutting, for getting the grooves and spaces to do some sanding. There's always going to be sanding when you do this type of thing. So we've got that. Uh, another thing I do too, and as you saw in the last vlog I did, I it took me a pan couple of panels to get all my depths and stuff uh, for the Dremel bit uh, set up. Uh, you know, if so I knew, you know, like the damages were going to be one depth, the pillow was going to be another depth, the, uh, you know, the pattern on the uh, wallpaper up here was going to be another depth. Uh, it's hard to remember from pattern to pattern what you had things set at, other than getting your, uh, the panel you just done, uh, just got done out, setting the Dremel in there and doing your adjustments bulky and what have you so I always give a little piece of scrap foam and once I get my depths figured out I, I make a line or a groove in the foam and then I can just hold this over my bit you know and set my adjustments you know it's a depth gauge basically so we do that uh, another thing too I also highly recommend having or getting is some silicone caulking uh, this is used in case of mistakes or da uh, unwanted damage being done to the uh, uh, your uh, sheet. Uh, like on this one, on this pattern here, when I cut my, as I showed in my uh, other vlog, when I uh, cut my groove for my fluting on the pillar, uh, right where you start and right where you stop, uh, you know, there's always a little bit of a trace of that groove. You know, I mean, you know, I, I use my wood dowel sandpaper and I go over it, you know, to get my actual groove I want in there. I just use the, uh, I score the foam with the uh, Dremel in order, you know, to give me a, a guide for the sanding block. And there's always a little bit of that guide showing. You can take a little bit of your silicone caulking, put it in there, smooth it out, and it hides that once, once you've paint, painted. Or you could be doing your wallpaper up here and slip and go outside your pattern and end up with a gouge in an area where you don't want to gouge at. You can use this to fill it. Once it's painted you don't see it. 
So silicone caulking is a must for this because you're going to get that no matter how careful you are. Uh, now I should warn you uh, with this project, uh, this is a highly messy project. You are going to get little chunks of foam everywhere. Okay. Uh, with that being said, you're going to need to do cleanup from time to time. Uh, you're going to start doing some carving and you're going to have the waste material kind of scattered throughout the board and the, and the Dremel is not going to want to slide evenly across it. So you're going to need to clean it up. Uh, you know, get that waste off the, uh, off the sheet so you can see what you're doing. You know, much like cutting a piece of wood, you get sawdust all over the place and every so often you have to sweep it off or blow it off, you know, so you can see your lines. Uh, here, same same thing. Uh, you got two different ways that you can do this. One, you can use a whisk broom and simply, you know, sweep it off. One problem with using a whisk broom is if you get into some areas of your foam carving where you've got just small pieces of foam attached, you know, like an outside trim piece or the end of a run or whatever, using the whisk broom can actually rip those off your sheet, ruining your pattern. So you do need to be careful using a whisk broom. Uh, what I normally like doing is air, air hose. Works perfect. Focus the light, just a slight tap, and the foam's gone. And it doesn't damage what you're carving. So I use that. Uh, like I said though, with the nature of the waste coming off of here, you're gonna have chunks of foam all over the place. Uh, if you have pets, uh, they're going to get into your waste. We'll track it throughout your house if you're doing this in a basement workshop or a side room like I'm doing. So be prepared to be finding foam throughout the house long after you finish the product. A uh, couple other things too, you know, with blowing it and stuff, uh, you do need to. I do need to cover. Uh, if you have a, a be beverage handy. Uh, with the process of blowing or even just with regular carving. Uh, make sure you either use a straw when you're drinking or put a lid, some sort of cover over the roof of, or over the top of your uh, container that you're drinking from. Because you will get chunks and little chunks of foam waste in your drink. And while the foam won't kill you, it don't taste all that good. <laughs> So uh, cover, make sure you cover your drink or use a straw or something so you're not getting the waste that's floating on top of your drink. Second, if you're a smoker like I am, you need to take particular, uh, particular, uh, pay particular attention while you're carving. Uh, I have a nasty habit of when I'm smoking and I hold the cigarette in my hand or my cigar in my hand, you know, and carve this way and I don't pay attention to the cigar, the cigar dips down, touches the foam, and the heat of your cigar or cigarette will melt the foam, causing damage, which means you need to get your cocking out and patch it. Also, uh, the ash, any ash that falls off your cigarette or cigar or pipe or whatever you're toking on, uh, if it hits the foam, it will also scar and mark the foam. Uh, so keep uh, you know, be very, very careful if you're, you're smoking while doing this. Uh, also, back to the waste and, and uh, cigarettes, when you're blowing it, you're going to get some of that waste into your ashtray or whatever container you're using to put your cigarettes out in. And if you go to put a cigarette into it, it's going to melt it. You're going to get foam fumes. So, you know, just pay attention and be a little careful. Best bet is to not smoke while you're doing this. Another tool that's used uh, for foam carving from time to time is a spray bottle and a heat gun, depending on the pattern you're using. You can get, uh, like if you're doing a rock wall pattern, you can spritz the foam down with water, take your heat gun over it, and get a nice rock look to it. Uh, you know, I will be, I have some other panels I'll be carving later in the season with that type of pattern. I'll show you how to do the water and heat gun method with that pattern when I get to it. Uh, this section, uh, the section you're about to see, is going to be in fast forward. 
uh, so it should shorten down the length. I'm guesstimating about two and a half hours to three hours to go from the stage we're at now to the finished stage, which you've seen already in my last vlog. Now, uh, we're going to be doing some carving with the Dremel and then using assorted sand, sanding blocks and sandpaper to achieve my final look. Oh, one other thing, too, uh, before we get started with that. Ear protection. <laughs> Almost forgot about that. That's an important one. This Dremel gets noisy. Uh, you're going to be, you know, within about a foot or two uh, of the uh, device. Uh, I would recommend ear protection and eye protection if you choose. Uh, with this type of material or stuff and stuff that we're using, uh, you don't have to worry so much about the eye protection. Uh, but with the ear protection, you know, you either use earplugs or like with me, I listen to the stereo usually. So I got a set of headphones. So, uh, you know, I use that while I'm doing it. You know, it helps cut down on the noise on the Dremel itself. So, okay, now with that, let's get to, get to some carving. Every day 
I'm shuffling. And be the first girl to make me throw this cash We get money, don't be mad Now stop, hating is bad One more shot for us, another round Please fill up, look up, turn us around We just wanna see, you shake it up Now you home with me